Chair, I would like to use the rest of my time to move a, no a motion that I put on notice last Friday. And I just okay. want to let read me Let that. me interrupt for a sec. We're going to just distribute it to uh, all the members right now. So go ahead, Mrs. Block. I'll read it into the record. Given the government has spent $9 million of taxpayer money on a luxury condo located on Billionaires Row in New York City for the Consul General, the committee ordered Global Affairs Canada to produ produce a list within 14 days of this motion being adopted of all properties, including the addresses and listing prices of those that were visited or considered for purchase for the official residence of the Consulate General in New York. And the committee called the following witnesses to testify. Minister of Global Affairs, Melanie Jolie, Consul General of Canada in New York, United States, Tom Clark, and the Deputy Minister of Global Affairs and other representatives from the department. And if I may just quickly speak to the motion that I just read into the record. I think what has come to light over the past few years under this government's procurement practices is extremely disturbing, but perhaps not surprising. Whether it has been the hundreds of millions of dollars going to Liberal Insiders or their friends at McKinsey getting special treatment, in receiving government contracts or former Liberal MPs and future Liberal leader hopefuls like Frank Bayless, uh, whose company got a massive contract during the pandemic for ventilators that went unused, cost the government hundreds of millions of dollars only to be sold as scrap metal. We have seen the complete lack of spending controls on major procurements, including a RIVE scam. And every step along the way, this government has tried to cover up these consequences of their failed governance. We know that they voted against uh, uh, the audit of the Arrive Can app, swearing that there was nothing to uh, Mrs. Block, I'm afraid uh, your connection is breaking up again. Um, maybe move your mic a tiny bit up, and I, we might have to ask you to finish up, because again, we're having troubles. Translators are having troubles hearing you. Thank you. I'll continue and they can let me know if there's a problem. And no, we're not able to hear you properly. Well, that is extremely disappointing. I, um, I don't know what I can do from my end. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the interpretation is uh, not coming through at all, uh, you're breaking up too much. Thank you. We're going to move, move the motion. Okay. Thank you. We'll start a uh, speaking order. I have Mrs. Uh, Bignola. Bonjour. Uh, Hello. In general, I agree with this motion, but I would like to uh, amend it in a few ways. We agree that $9 million for a New York condo for the Consul General uh, needs to be examined. $9 million would make a, a – is a lifetime of work for the average person. That's a lot of money uh, to be spent, so this certainly does need to be examined. In the context of a, of a federal budget, it might seem like not very much money. But uh, nine million is actually uh, quite a large sum. Here's the amendments that I would suggest, and uh, those will be provided to you in the coming seconds if you haven't gotten them already. Given that the government spent nine million dollars of taxpayers' money to purchase an apartment in Manhattan, New York, for the Consul General. The committee directs Global Affairs Canada to produce, within 14 days of the adoption of this motion, a list of all properties, including addresses and listing prices, that have been viewed or considered for purchase for the Consulate General's official residence in New York. And the committee calls the following witnesses to testify. The Consul General of Canada in New York, USA, Tom Clark, the Deputy Minister of Global Affairs and other departmental representatives, representatives from supply, uh, PSPC and the Treasury Board, as well as a panel of uh, New York City real estate agents, and the Minister of Global Affairs, Melanie Jolie, if the committee deems it necessary after hearing the other witnesses. 
and that these meetings be held between August 19th and August 27th, 2024, inclusively, and that apart from these three additional meetings, the committee hold no additional meetings before September 9th, 2024, with the exception of the uh, 106.4 meetings and the meeting scheduled for today, which we could uh, take out because it's a moot point now. Uh, so except for the uh, 106.4 meetings, period. Thank you. Yeah, uh, speaking order on the amendment. I have Mr. Brock and then Mr. Alhassi, do you, are you is your hand up for the amendment or the original motion? Well, um, I, I had an opportunity to li both listen. No, I'm to not asking. Sorry, I'm not asking you. <laughs> it's a is your hand up for the motion or the amendment, please? Uh, for the amendment. Okay, so you'll be up to Mr. Brock. Before we go to Mr. Brock, though, just to confirm, Mrs. Vignola. Basic, your, your amendment is to add and that these meetings will begin the week of August 19th and apart from the three additional meetings, the committee hold no additional meetings before September 9th with the exception of 1064 meetings. Is that correct? You're just adding that one line at the... Uh, oui, ça ajoute cette, li cette modification-là. Uh... Yes, it does add that paragraph on. The other change would be that... Uh, the minister would only be invited if the committee deems it necessary after the other witnesses. Uh, we've done this in the past with other ministers. Uh, and for the uh, Manhattan apartment, I think uh, I, I mentioned Manhattan instead of billionaires row, just to be more specific. To clarify, that's uh, appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Brock and then Mr. Alhassi Thank on you. the amendment. Thank you, Chair. And uh, at this juncture, the Conservatives uh, will be voting in favour of the amendment. Uh, owing to the technical difficulties experienced by my colleague, Ms. Block, and to complete the record, I wish to finish her thoughts. Whether it's their friends at McKinsey getting special treatment and receiving government contracts, or former Liberal MPs and future Liberal leader hopefuls like Frank Bayliss, whose company got a massive contract during the pandemic for ventilators that went unused, cost the government hundreds of millions of dollars only to be sold as scrap metal. We've also seen the complete lack of spending controls on major procurements like the Arrive scam, an app that started with an $80,000 initial price tag, but ballooned to at least $60 million, according to the Auditor General. And every step along the way, this government has tried to cover up these consequences of their failed governance. They voted against the audit of the Arrive Can app, swearing that there was nothing to find. They swore there was nothing to find with the McKinsey contracting. Yet each time malfeasance is found and has revealed a troubling pattern. Right before the House rose for the summer recess, it was reported that the government was purchasing a building right on Spark Street. No, pra no practical reason for purchasing this building was given in the articles, but they did note that point surprise, order, surprise, a good friend. Sorry, Mr. Brock, we have a point of order. Uh, Mr. Jory. My apologies, Chair. I'm, I believe we are debating the amendment to Ms. Vignolo's motion, and I'm trying to understand the relevance. I just want to follow, and if, if it's relevant, I'm sure you will allow it. If it's, we need to go back and focus on the amendment. I really appreciate that direction from you. Yeah. Mr. Zwari does have a point. We are uh, debating the amendment, not the original motion. Um, perhaps if you just uh, stick with the amendment, please, yep. sir. But did note, surprise, surprise, a good friend of the Prime Minister, Michael Pitfield, had part ownership of that building. Again, Conservatives are voting in favour of the amendment. Of all the buildings they could have purchased in Ottawa, they happen to buy one that directly benefits a close friend of the Prime Minister. Again, Conservatives are voting for the amendment. Now, Point in New of York, order, one of Chair. Trudeau's hand-picked diplomats... Order, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, you, you did point out uh, correctly and accurately uh, that this is about the amendment. Uh, so uh, everything that the that the member is saying currently is irrelevant. He, he Thank you. He literally mentioned the amendment in the last ten seconds. I have. It's all irrelevant. I've got literally thirty seconds. If they want to continue <laughs> yeah. to interrupt. They don't want to talk me. about Pitfield because Anna Gainey wants to be Finish up, Mr. Brock, and right. then uh, we'll go to the Mr. Alhassi. 
Thank you. Of all the buildings they could have purchased in Ottawa, they happen to buy one that directly benefits a close friend of the Prime Minister. Now in New York, one of Trudeau's hand-picked diplomats just got a big upgrade in his residence. Trudeau has found it prudent to purchase an apartment on Billionaire's Row for $9 million. Again, Conservatives are voting in favour of the amendment. Right. This is how Trudeau's chosen elite live high on the taxpayer's dime, at a time when Canadians are struggling to pay their mortgages or the rent. Again, Conservatives are voting in favour of the amendment. At a time when our country is seeing more tent cities cropping up across the country, at a time when 2 million plus Canadians are going to food banks to feed their families, and according to the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, more hurt is on the way with more defaults on the horizon as many Canadians are facing mortgage renewals over the next few years. Again, Conservatives are voting in favour of the amendment. Frankly, at a time when Canadians are living through housing hell, Trudeau is more interested in buying food, sorry, buying for and buying for, from his friends over delivering for Canadians. Conservatives believe that Canadians deserve answers, which is why Ms. Block brought forward this motion, which calls on the government. And I can't complete her thoughts on that, but that's my intervention. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. We'll go to uh, Mr. Hassassi. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you uh, uh, very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, just on the topic of uh, amendments, uh, we certainly support uh, the thrust of uh, the amendments that, uh, uh, that have been proposed. Um, I was just wondering if I could make some, uh, uh, some changes just to make sure uh, that this committee can do its work uh, properly. Uh, the first one would be uh, I'll just have, let uh, me just interrupt you. You're proposing a sub amendment, just to be clear. Yes, correct. Perfect. Go ahead, yes. sir. So uh, I am proposing, uh, first of all, just to refine it somewhat, uh, that uh, for the documents that have to be uh, provided to the members, uh, that we extend that uh, from 14 days to 30 days. Uh, so that would be the first uh, aspect of my sub amendment. The second one, um, I understand. Uh, that uh, Ms. Vignola has uh, proposed uh, that we hear from uh, relevant witnesses. Uh, that uh, makes eminent sense. However, I was wondering if, um, uh, in the interest of uh, assisting the members, uh, if uh, all the members would agree uh, to send in the names of those witnesses uh, and for the deadline to be August 12th. So it would be adding relevant witnesses and submitting, submitting those witnesses by the members by the deadline of August 12th. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, speaking on the sub-amendment, uh, we do have a, uh, a rule, lack of better words, in the committee that uh, a lot of witnesses will be based on the percentage of the parties, so it's a pretty straightforward amendment there. The 12th seems pretty straightforward as well. But anyone wish to speak on the sub amendment? The other, the other issue that Mr. Sassi has brought up is just the date of the documents. I see Mrs. Vignola. I'd like to thank my colleague for his suggestions uh, regarding the list of witnesses. Typically, we don't add that to motions, we figure it out uh, informally at the end of a meeting. But I understand. Uh, and uh, August 12th is a reasonable date. As for the documents, 30 days. Well, that means we would get them... Well, we might get them by the time the first witnesses uh, take the floor, but uh, we might not get them. We might not have an opportunity to read or analyze them. So, in my view, 30 days is too long to receive th these documents. I understand that uh, there are uh, challenges with translation and interpretation. I get it. But I don't uh, like to go on a fishing trip when I question a witness. I want to be able to base my reflections on something concrete, something I have analyzed. And if I don't have the documents before the first meeting, 
then the only thing I'll be able to do is uh, go on a fishing trip and ask vague questions. Then I'll get documents after the fact and realize, oh, wow, the answers they gave were in the documents that I would have been able to read. I would have had better questions. So that would be a big waste of time, a waste of the witnesses' times. A waste of uh, taxpayer money as well, because, of course, they're the ones who uh, finance the work of this committee. So, with uh, efficiency in mind, I would not approve a 30-day deadline, because I would need to read the documents before the uh, committee meeting. Personally, I could not, cannot accept that uh, sub-amendment. I apologize. Right. Anyone else wish to speak on the sub amendment? It sounds like we're committee seems to be fine with the first part, which is the witness, but not with the second. We can either just have a vote on the sub amendment in its entirety, or perhaps if we're fine. Oh, Mr. Ahasi, go ahead. Again, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I had an opportunity to uh, listen to Ms. Vignola, uh, and I certainly uh, understand and appreciate full well uh, her concern. However, I, I don't think it would be, make sense for us to run the possible risk uh, of not providing the department uh, ample opportunity uh, within 14 days to provide uh, those documents. So God forbid, uh, should that not prove possible, uh, we would find ourselves in a very precarious position, um, and, and I really do think uh, 30 uh, days would make uh, more sense because the 30 days would not uh, uh, would not run. We do run the 30 days prior uh, to the next uh, meeting of the uh, committee, but that's just uh, an observation on my part. Would we? Uh, I'm, I'm getting a. Oh, go ahead, Mrs. Vignola. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair. I understand where my colleague is uh, coming from. I do try to compromise, and I like to find uh, an arrangement that could uh, that would satisfy everyone around the table. I also want to uh, respect the realities of uh, public servants and translators. So I would suggest a friendly amendment. Je dirais de changer le 30 jours. Instead of 30 days, I would suggest 21. This would be partway between the original um, amendment and the sub-amendment. What do you think? Thanks. Uh, I'm seeing nods around, but I do have Mr. Barrett wishes to speak on the sub-amendment. So the the motion, uh, so I have a, a question for clarification. I want to ensure that the proposal with respect to witnesses, um, it, it just needs to be clearly understood by, by everyone, that this is in addition to the witnesses that are prescribed in the motion. The, I need to understand that, that this isn't replacing um, in the in the because we don't have the the sub amendment in writing, that the that the main mo that the sub amendment does not remove uh, the named witnesses being the consul general, the deputy minister named, the representatives from um, Supply Canada and Treasury Board, minister of global and the minister of global affairs. So th those witnesses are need to still be included. I need to understand if that's what we're voting on. And further, um, if the if the Meeting is to be meetings are to be held between the 19th and the 27th. Um, whatever the date is that is being proposed, uh, 21, uh, 15, that we need to have an assurance um, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, from uh, from the House that we're going to be able to have those documents translated for that uh, that first meeting of the committee. So that to Ms. Vignola's original point. The documents need to be in our hands in both official languages prior to the opening of the uh, of the window for these meetings to occur, and I, I need to just get some some clarity that the named witnesses 
in addition to the proposal for the um, for the submission of, of additional witnesses, um, that these witnesses remain, and that's in addition to uh, those witnesses. The first question on if we set 21 days is the 14th, I think it would be by, say, noon. We should, um, I don't think it's a lot of documents, but you never know. So I can't say with absolute certainty, but probable, because I cannot imagine it's a lot, but and being summer, I don't think there's a lot of requests going into the Translation Bureau right now. So not a certainty. Your second question is, you have the same understanding as I do, but Mr. Sassi can uh, chime in. It's just uh, to provide the witnesses by X date, but it's not to replace these witnesses, but to provide for the parties to provide uh, witnesses by the, I think he said the 12th. Uh, by the 12th, so it yeah. uh, provides but a it's date, not re but, but it's not replacing witnesses well, well, noted in a, the, it was that your uh, intent? Mr. No, Assessor? it no. wasn't, uh, but to, to the best of my understanding, it currently reads other relevant witnesses submitted by members. So it's not replacing, so, 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 so are we, we No, it's no. not replacing. Yeah. So are you clear on the second part about the witnesses? Yeah. The, 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 uh, Receiving the documents in the translation, it's always um, difficult. I mean, we can't guarantee it because uh, I don't know how many documents are going to arrive. If 5,000 pages arrive, just to exaggerate, um, within 14 days, they're not going to get translated, whether we say 14 days or 21 days. But there's not a lot going in the Translation Bureau right now, so I think we sh probably should be fine with that. Assuming, assuming yeah. they're not taking vacation. Yes, assuming they're not taking vacation. So I would assume so, but nothing's a guarantee. And we wouldn't be able to guarantee if it was the 14th anyways. Or we wouldn't be able to guarantee if it was 31 days or 30 days, as which is, was originally proposed. But it is for the 14th? Is that what we're saying now? 14th as opposed to 14 days. Right. So we're yeah, saying so the 14th, yes. The 14th. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sensing we're okay with that. We cannot do it as a friendly amendment, but we can adopt it as a UC, Mrs. Vignola's suggestion. And just to be clear, I'll have the clerk read back what the sub-amendment will be. With bringing in Mr. Um, Assassi's uh, comments on the witness date and the date of the documents. Just the sub amendment. So the sub amendment is to replace after the words, or to add after the words, to produce within 21 days of the adoption of this motion and after the other witnesses, that other relevant witnesses to be submitted by the parties by August 12th. Straightforward, everyone's clear on that? Fine, so we'll consider the sub-amendment adopted. We will now go to the, back to the original amendment, amendment which if you recall is... Um, original amendment as amended. The sub-amendment, uh, yeah, so we're now back to amendment. the original <laughs> amendment from Mrs. Vignola, which adds, um, which adds the dates uh, for the meetings and ends other meetings. Bear with me two seconds. So we're adding Mrs. Vignola's, so we've Except to the sub amendment, we're back to the original amendment from Mrs. Vignola, which is, and that these meetings be held between August 19th and 27th, 24 inclusively. Apart from these additional meetings, committee hold no additional meetings before September 9th, with the exception of 1064s. And then also changes um, 
last line for the witnesses, uh, the Minister of Global Affairs, uh, Minister Jolie, if the committee deems necessary. So we're now back on that amendment. And I will go to Mr. McKinnon. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just had uh, a concern that I don't, I'm not clear that the committee has the power to order, um, you know, somebody to, to produce documents. I suspect that has to go to the House and the House has to issue that order. I wonder if someone could clarify that. Perhaps the clerk could clarify that. No, well, the committee, committee does have the power to do that. I'm going to have the clerk repeat what I said, and you're welcome to, sir, but committees we've ordered, <laughs> as members around this table know, hundreds of thousands of pages of documents. But if you wish to confirm that for Mr. McKinnon, sir. Uh, yes, uh, the committee is within the rights to uh, request uh, production of documents. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Clerk, here, here. I couldn't hardly hear you. So yes, the committee uh, can request uh, the production of documents. Order, order. Okay. Order. Well, thank you for th thank you for that clarification. In that case, I would like to propose a further sub amendment. Uh, I believe that we should add to the documents we are requesting. We should request a um, uh, an in independent third party assessment of the value of the property that was purchased. And that would, I, I guess, that language would be in, uh, you know, in the appropriate place in the, in the motion, uh, probably after the residence of the cons Consulate General in New York. I, I'm going to interrupt That's you, Mr. McKinnon. Maybe we could just start, restart that, because the committee cannot order money spent for a creation of an independent. If you're looking for the existence of one, maybe you could narrow it down to that, but we can't order an independent one done? I'm, um, I'm suggesting that, that we need to see the value of this property that we purchased. Um, and my suggestion is that, that you know, we ask for, the, uh, uh, for an independent third party assessment of the value of that property in that market. Yeah, that's not something that we can again order the government to pay for and have done. If you're asking for if there's an existing one, we can ask for those do an existing documents, but we can't uh, order the government to spend money to have a consultant. Maybe GC Strategies is available to do it, but um, we can't order that to be, uh, sorry, I to, <laughs> we can't order that to be done. I'm not, uh, I'm not requesting, I'm not suggesting that we order them to spend money. I'm asking that, that there be a, a, I mean, there is very likely a, an estimate, or sorry, an assessment that was made as part of the purchase. Um, but that's my amendment, is to, uh, my sub-amendment is that after the official residence of the Consul General in New York, um, including, okay, including if available, an independent third party uh, assessment of the value of the property in that market. Who, who do you, who are you, pro sorry, I'll get to, I'll hand it over to Mr. Bear and then Mrs. Vignola, but just, I want you to clarify, Mr. McKinney, who are you proposing does this independent? Because I mean, the committee can't order, even if we pass a motion, we can't order the government to perform an independent audit. We can ask if there's, eva there's I did, I did, I evaluations of it, I, or I we can ask if there was one done, we can ask for those papers. If that's As what I you're said, asking for. I, the language that I just said is that, and include, if available, an independent third party uh, assessment of the value of the property in that market. That does not order the government to spend any money, um, but that is my, uh, my sub-amendment. So just to be clear, the sub-amendment to produce these documents if it exists. If available is what I said. Um, I think it's important that we, we understand the value yeah. of the property. This is not yeah. an expense. Not, this is so if, if, there, if, there is, if there was an independent one done, we can ask for it if it exists. Not if it's available, if it exists. We can order it, the production of it. How's that? Are we on the same 
wavelength now, now Mr. McKinnon? Um, Basically, if if one was done, we'll order for we'll order the production of it. Correct. I'm going to say say uh, I, I don't really like you rewording my motion or my amendment, but I will reword it a little bit. I'll say to add after the purchase for the official residence of the Consul General in New York, comma, and request if available any third party independent assessment of the value of the property in that market that should should deal with your your concerns bear with us two seconds mr mckinnon Just making sure our clerk has what you've been asking for, Mr. McKinnon, so everyone's clear. I'm just going to read it back. The clerk's just going to read it back to you, Mr. McKinnon, if you can let us know if, uh, if we've collected it correctly from you. So, up in New York. So after New York, uh, comma, add and request, if available, any independent 30, third party assessment of the value of the property in that market. Yes, that will be sufficient. Can we add within 21 days so we keep it with the same, um, the same for the other documents? Um, sure. Okay. Okay. Did you wish to wish to speak on this, Mrs. McNola? Okay, Mr. Barrett, Mrs. McNola, and then Mr. Barrett, and then Mr. Brock. Just very quickly, it's much more clear now. So, if the government has carried out an analysis, we would like to have it. I think uh, that was already included in the original wording where it talked about uh, the documents, but sure, I, we appreciate the clarification. Thanks, Mr. Barrett, then Mr. Brock. Uh, well, I fundamentally disagree with Mr. McKinnon that this is not an expense. His words were that this $9 million is not an expense, that $9 million in a cost of living crisis, in a housing crisis in our country, $9 million on a on a condo for Justin Trudeau's buddy Tom Clark uh, on Billionaire Row, that nine million dollars is not an expense. Well, did, was it a gift? Because if it, where did where did the uh, how, how did that purchase come to pass? I mean, just a, absolute uh, fantasy uh, along the uh, lines of budgets balancing themselves. Of course, nine million dollars is an expense. And it was taken out of Canadians' pockets. It was taxed off of their paychecks. So, of course, $9 million is an expense. And uh, I'm pleased that the chair did um, heavily coach the amendment because in its current form, it, it, uh, it's, it's supportable, though it wasn't in its original form. Um, but we, we want all of the information about this $9 million expense that taxpayers are footing for the luxury condo for Justin Trudeau's buddy Tom Clark living on, quote, billionaire row in New York City. And uh, I hope Mr. Clark enjoys it uh, until the day after the next election. The concern that I have, if anyone, I'm sure we, we've all dabbled in real estate uh, in our personal lives, if not professional lives, there's always a cost attached to any assessment of fair market value. No, I understand that, Chair. I just want to complete my thoughts. <clears throat> There's always a cost to obtain an assessment. So in the ordinary course of events, the Liberal government, an agent of the Liberal government, would have negotiated the purchase of this extravagant 
ultra luxury penthouse on Billionaire's Row for $9 million. There may or may not be an assessment that was made privy to the agent who purchased the property on behalf of the Government of Canada. But unless it's in the government's possession, even if one exists, the author of that assessment, unless they are a very generous individual or company, is highly unlikely to release it to the government to comply with this order without a cost. So unless the Liberal Party of Canada, which is, is in a position to pony up for a potential expenditure to comply with this particular order of committee, my concerns are it should not fall to the taxpayer. Mr. McKinney, is your hand up? Or is this just from the previous? Uh, yes, I just wanted to uh, quibble about Mr. Barrett's uh, comments. Um, it's a purchase of a liquidable, liquidatable asset. It is owned by the Government of Canada. It can be sold at some point and presumably uh, the, the value we captured. It is definitely not uh, an expense by any acceptable accounting um, uh, process. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And uh, uh, I also would suggest that we sh should uh, ask or invite our uh, witnesses to, to, uh, to leave if, if they don't want to stay. Well, we no. No. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe save that for your committee, <laughs> Mr. McKinnon. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing we're getting close, so I'm hoping we might be able to get one more round in with the witnesses because I want to hear more from them. Are we, do we need to vote on Mr. McKinnon's uh, sub-amendment? So it sounds like, I think we're in a general agreement with basically providing those documents if, they're, if they exist, as the clerk has read back. Yeah. Are we fine with that? Do we need to vote on it or can we accept it as, oh, I'm sensing we are accepting it. Unanimous consent. We are now back to the original now amended motion. So we're back to the amendment. Do we need to, are we fine with this? Wonderful. That is accepted. So, and we're back now. This, the sub-amendment amended motion. Are we fine with it, colleagues? Yes. One fall. I am glad we did not uh, dismiss our witnesses.